did you watch Robot Wars? Yeah. Oh my God, I was so, I was far too into Robot Wars. Did you see when Daniel Sloss and his dad were on it? No. Did they not do a thing when their robot was so fierce that they actually were disqualified? Is that an, a myth? I've never heard that. That sounds like an urban legend of the robot was. Yeah, now have we just made up a lie? <laughs> that sounds Should like a rumour he podcast? started. <laughs> Let's put this on the podcast. So that is so that is a rumour that you heard. Oh, yeah. Oh, is this is this um, comic rumour time? Go for it. Is this, I mean, I don't know. I don't know Sloss at all. So if you know him, shout out. Well, I have no idea why I think the, <laughs> that this is a thing. <laughs> Hi, Daniel. I heard a rumour that him and his dad went on Robot Wars and the robot was too murderous and then they <laughs> weren't led back on again. I mean, but I, I now I don't know if I've just heard that they're on Robot Wars and I just like filled in blanks. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, it sounds good. It sounds like a rumor I would start if I'd went on Robot Wars. Imagine and got, taking down Matilda. <laughs> oh my God, I used to. I swear to God, I used to just be like, get Sir Kill a lot in the game. Oh my God, get Sir Kill a lot in, and then that was it. And he just never used to do fuck all on that thing. I used to get so emotionally attached to them all. Yeah, I, I mean, I couldn't. I can't even imagine the the effort that goes into that. You put your heart and soul into building a robot and then it just gets destroyed. <laughs> I feel like I could do a terrible job, but I always just felt like the, the things were either it was one that its only role was that it would be like a ramp and flip everyone else. That's it. All you need is a flipper. That's yeah. it. That's it. All you needed was a, a bit of a flip. But then if something sawed you in half, you need something that could saw and flip. You just need someone quick and it flipped. That's it. I wish they'd bring it back like properly. I think they do in America. It's still, I, I see clips all the time. <laughs> Not that I actively seek it out, but I still see clips of these things and they're like getting blown around the room. Wow. Honestly. Well, that's <laughs> and right they're about just like, <laughs> <laughs> where is John O'Connor? Where is it? <laughs> John O'Connor. Is that the, <laughs> no one. That's the Irish Terminator. Where's John O'Connor? <laughs> <laughs> Top of the morning to you. <laughs> John Connor. Oh, oh, no. John O'Connor. <laughs> what a start. <laughs> John O'Connor. Who else is there? Well, Sarah O'Connor, the mother. Again, Sarah O'Connor. <laughs> I love you just keep making them Irish, though. <laughs> Big fan of this. You're just determined to have a Terminator Irish spin off. What did you want to talk about the podcast? Because I was going to talk about how I got into comedy, but I don't know if you no, want to do that. that. Okay. Well, basically... <laughs> no, no, but it was going to be just like... Uh, I was actually going to talk about all your success recently, Mary Elaine. Oh. You know, you've had a fucking busy few weeks, haven't you? Yeah, it has been. Uh, but, uh, right, tell you, what, tell you what, why don't we go... Because there's been three big things you've done recently. So you, uh, uh, do you want me to remind, them of you? <laughs> remind you of them? Tell me. <laughs> no, um... Funny Women. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, I came that one. Second one. A second, Scott Speaker of the Year. Scott Speaker, yes. Oh, I could have taken my pity plaque today, but I didn't. You didn't bring the plaque. No. How, what was the plaque like? Wooden. <laughs> Wooden. It smells nice. It smells nice. Yeah. That's pretty good. How I, did How did you go about entering that, or did you get put forward for that? I just got nominated. And I felt kind of bad because um, I do that shit on the word of the day video, which I haven't done for months, uh -huh. and um, I do a lot of storytelling in shit and dialect, and then um, in the fringe. So. Basically, I'm from Shetland and we have a dialect, which is from our old language called Nord, a mix of Scots. And I like to share a lot of that and do a lot of storytelling in that. But when I do stand up, I specifically knap. Do you know what knap means? No. Can you guess? Merge. Hmm. I'm not too far <coughs> off. Bless you. So, um, <laughs> wait. No. Okay. <laughs> almost. <laughs> almost got it right. So, knap. Knap. K -N -A -P. Merge. Just can do them at the same. Well, knap actually means to speak English. Ah. So if I used to, I'm knapping right now because ah. I'm not speaking Shetland to you. So if I used to speak Shetland to you, I'd speak differently. How, how would that sound? I'd be like, it's weird to slip into it when you're talking to someone. I can yeah. tell you a bit of a Shetland poem and see if you get it. Go for it. Okay. It all upon a wheel can't hell, quas water thrice to grind the mill. I'll mancy be a get him a crowd to grum kill for mutton broy. I've got hell. Yep. Water. Yep. Sheep. Mutton. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, sheep's food, yeah. <laughs> That's all I got. Yeah. So it's over a hill that everybody knows. Mansi went to build a, an enclosure to grow kale to feed the sheep. That's all right, by the way. Yeah. I think that's all right, even though water wasn't in oh, there. Oh, sorry. Um, where it's a hill where there's a water mill. Ah, uh -huh. nailed it. Yeah. So everyone, uh, again, like I'm, I, I looked up, I did a bit of research on Shetland last night, by the way. 
And apparently you hate it being called the Shetlands. Yes. How did you find that out? Was it a video of me? Yeah, it was a video. <laughs> I actually just went, what does Shetlanders hate? And then there's a video of you just going and going, here's all the things that Shetlanders hate. And I was like, right, okay, don't mention any of them. Top of the list was the Shetlands. Yeah. That's a big no-no. Shetlands. Yeah, just Shetland. It comes yeah. from Catlin, which means land of the sword. Yeah. Because I believe Odin's sword is hidden in Shetland. Sicker snacker. S- what? I think it's called that. I forget. Odin's sword is yeah. hidden in Shetland. I wonder if that's why it's called land of the sword. Yeah. It's quite interesting because, I, I, again, I I think a lot of people... Do you find a lot of people are quite uh, ignorant about Shetland? Yeah, but I don't blame them because it is just such an island far away and it's like there's so many areas of Scotland I can nothing about, so yeah. I don't mind. It's it's more like if someone says the Shetlands to me, then... You instantly just want to stab them. Or I have. No, I am. <laughs> I, uh, do you know what? I sometimes don't even... Sometimes, it's so gracious. Sometimes I don't even correct them. But uh, <laughs> it's it's just because if they say it briefly once and we're moving on conversation, I say nothing. But if they, the thing that really grinds my gears is when I... If we're speaking and I say, oh, by the way, it's just Shetland. And then they're like, well, actually, it's a collection of over 100 islands, so it's technically Shetlands. And I'm like, that's just Yeah, you're like, you don't even live there. Yeah. Don't tell us what we do. Exactly. I wouldn't tell you to call it Londinium, even though that's what its old name is. Do you know what? There's a a word I've got an absolute mind blank on, and I cannot say it. It's archipelago. Oh, you've ruined it for me now. Archipelago. I don't know. There's, that's, there's one Archipel- word in my life. Anytime I see it, I was like, I don't know. How. And I've looked it up and I've tried to say it and I cannot do it. I think it's ar- archipelago. Archi- oh, why are you asking me? Archipelago. So many islands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the one. Just say the Shetlands. <laughs> <laughs> no, archipelago. archipelago. Can't, can't do it. No matter what. You can it. tell me right now and I I'll tomorrow I'll forget. I think it's archipelago. Yeah, can't do it. Oh. Ian says I'm right. Ian? Right. We're getting it verified. Verified. Cool. Yeah, I can't. I can't say that word. Don't know why. Try it now. Do you know? Oh, let's find out this one. So, Ark. Ark. Eh. Eh. Pele. Pele. Is that the hand man? Pele. Pele. Is he the one who used his hand? I don't know what you're talking about. In the football. What? Pele. Oh, Pele. Oh, Pele. that's Maradona. Oh. What but did Pele do? Did he just have great hair? Pele was a Brazilian footballer. Oh. Mar- same era though. I think same era. Okay. So I think the two of the best footballers of all time back in like back in the day was Pele and Maradona. Maradona was a hand of God guy. Okay. Close though. Pele used his feet. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, Don used his hands. He used his feet a lot. Okay. Yeah. So, Archipela. So, Arch, like what Noah's on. Eh? Like. Yeah. Eh. Eh. Pele. Pele. Used his feet. Pele uses his feet. Ah. Ah. For. (laughs) Apple. Oh, yeah. And then go. Go. Archipelago. There we go. I'll forget that by tomorrow. I think that was right. It's, it feels like a big waste of time. the sentence. The Shetlands are an archipelago. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We fucked it. Yeah. Are we allowed to swear? Yeah. Oh, Boobs. God, yeah. Okay. Say anything you want. Go for it. What's your favourite swear word? When I was petty, I really like to say bollocks. Yeah, bollocks is a good one. And I think that came from watching lots of Goodness Gracious Me. Yeah? Because they said bollocks a lot. Yeah. I think. I like that. But now I don't know if I have a favourite swear word. No. Do you? Quite like just someone go, oh, that's shite. Literally. Just a really, just, a, just like, oh, fan, calling someone a wee fanny. I love that. That's it's fanny a swear word. I mean, it kind of is. It's not the, it's definitely not the worst, but I think you kind of go through phases of just kind of get, you get bored of the ones. Oh yeah, like I like twat a lot for ages. Twat's good, twat's good. We have a village in Chatham called Twat. No way. Oh, well, I'd call it more of a hamlet. Ooh. How many, how many people live there? Well, quite a few. It's actually been expanding recently, but it's amazing because I remember um, <laughs> Dad was talking about it. Me and my brother were giggling, and this was like maybe three years ago. And Dad's like, no, twat is it's, it's a place name. It's a place name. Twat is a place name, and it comes from our old Norse language, and it's it makes sense because it means a fertile dip. It's a, a bit in the land that's really fertile. And it's like, and like, that's a twat. <laughs> that <laughs> is the twat. Speaking of fat twats, Twat's good. I like twat. Um, I think that's the thing. I think there's just so many. I hate the kid where, like, I think everyone kind of went through a phrase of, you know, like, cock womble came out and it was that. I think I'm kind of over that now. Cock womble. You never heard of someone called a cock womble? Like, they're a womble that only gathers, like, Cocks. penises. No, nah, I don't know what it was. I feel like cock it just became quite a thing a uh, thing people used to say online and be like, oh, he's a cock womble. And I kind of was like, oh, I used to be re- really into that. Then I was like, nah, I can't do that anymore. 
I don't like when people who don't use the term normally start saying it like ball bags. When Falk oh who wouldn't God. when Falk who wouldn't naturally say ball bags start saying ball bags, it just makes it sound cheesy. Where it's like if you naturally say ball bags, yeah. yes, it's good. But if you're forcing it, I hate it. Yeah, it's like when people who just really can't pull off the word scran. You yeah. just hear you just people. Oh, you really want to scran? I yeah. just think, oh God, don't do that. That's don't. a word I wouldn't use because I would be forcing it. Yeah, I don't think I'd ever use that word. It's a, when I hear other people using it, I'm just like, no, nah, don't do that, don't do that. I think it works if it's in there, in there. Yeah, a lot of people can't pull it off. But yeah, not. Um, what else? What? Other, what? Right. So, <laughs> favorite swear words: cock womble. Not out of that. Cunt. Not a big fan of cunt. I like it. It's it's a good word, but I I don't really I kind of like I, I wouldn't use it on stage that much because I think if you if you overuse it I think you get one cunt a set if you overdo it it kind of takes away the power of it. I can't remember if I've ever used that word on stage before cunt. No. I think I once did it as a bit, but this is like back in when I because I did stand up backwards when I did our shows before I did fives. Oh, fuck <laughs> off! Did you actually? <laughs> This is why I was like, oh, did you want to know? So basically, well, basically... Right, okay, let's, like, how did you end up doing that? Like, let's go for that. Well, to try and cut a long story, like medium short, um, I studied here, moved back to Shetland, and I ended up living in Amsterdam for a bit. Yeah. And just like bad thing after bad thing after bad thing happened. And I'm normally a lucky person. Yeah. But I got like fired from my job for asking for a minimum wage, and I got kicked to my flat and was living on my friend's floor. And eventually when we got a house, I got robbed. So everything I had was taken from me. Jesus so Christ, that's a bad run. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't that good. <laughs> <laughs> Understatement there. You just had everything taken from you, oh, your and job and your house. Yeah, and it's when you move somewhere, then you have like all your books on your Kindle and all your music on your iPod. And I was doing video, ed I was working at McDonald's. I eventually got a job at McDonald's. Nice. So I did have a job when I got robbed and we were, did have a place to stay. So like, I was like, oh, everything's coming up Mill House. <laughs> 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 My McDonald's job and... The McDonald's fired you for asking for minimum wage. No, another restaurant did. Bastards. So basically, I, I, after we slept on my friend's floor for a while, I was looking for a job. Then we got a house with some pals that we rented, and then um, I got a job at McDonald's. Nice. After applying three times. Oh. The first two times I applied, I answered the questions really like I love to work at McDonald's because I hit the largest fast food restaurant with all these uh, um, opportunities to like grow and develop. And both times I didn't get a job interview. And the third time I was like, fuck it. And they're like, why do you want the job? And I just said, I really like McDonald's. Oh, and I got I the job McDonald's. in three days. <laughs> <laughs> they don't want you to think. Oh, no, no, no. Just tell them you love the product. I yeah. fucking love McDonald's. But um, yeah, so basically when I got the job, then I, I was video editing on the side and making films for people on the side. Yeah. And uh, But when I got robbed, they took everything, like all the cameras and stuff. That's a heavy robbing. So it wasn't even so if, if someone robbed my flat, honest to God, they would get nothing. They would maybe get a TV that I bought ten years ago. Well, this was like when I was doing video editing. So it's like my cameras, my laptop, my Kindle, my iPod, my clothes, and they put everything obviously in my suitcases. They took your suitcases as well. They took my How long did these people have in the flat? The length of the time the McDonald's. Uh, no, a chef sorry, to McDonald's. Sorry, the length of the time of the Lego Movie, which is why I can never watch it again, and that's the real reason I hate Chris Pratt. <laughs> <laughs> so you were like, right, I'm going to go see the Lego movie. Got back from that, everything's gone. Yeah. Whew, that's tough. Yeah. I've never seen the Lego movie. I hear it's Don't good. watch it, you're going to get <laughs> robbed. I hear, I, hear <laughs> I hear it's really good to Like when I hear that Everything is Awesome song, I'm like, no, it, it is isn't, not. It, it's not. I got robbed. I can't even watch the Batman Lego one. So basically, I, um, I, I, uh, my, I was doing improv courses yeah. on Sundays. I was doing improv drop-in workshops. It's the only thing I could afford in yeah. the comedy school. And they felt that bad about my robbery that they signed me up to the stand-up course, which I couldn't afford. And they're like, just come and do the stand-up course. That's nice. That we want. And they're like, all you need is a pencil and paper. And I was like, that is what I have. So um, I did a stand-up course and then I immediately moved back to Shetland. And I always thought, I'd like to do stand-up again. So I just applied to the Free Fringe. No way. And I just did a, a, just a few days of a run. And I was like, that was fun. So I had this notion that I could live in Shetland full time, but come down every August and do a show. And just clean up. So I did my debut show. The first time I ever did a full run, I did my debut show and I didn't know what a debut show was. And I wish people would just, you know, toughen up and just do their debuts. <laughs> the be real. Right, yeah. So many people just doing Stop year after away. year when you've done your debut. 
And you just, so you went, maybe I'm bitter. <laughs> yeah, it sounds a lot like that. Because I got robbed. Yeah, so you just went all in, debut. Where about was it? Black Market. Was that? It was a pop up venue when you're PBH, and it was actually one of the best venues I've ever been in. It was like Dude Next Edinburgh Dungeons. Yeah. And uh, it was this huge room with a bar and a chippy and a DJ, and then heaps of rooms off of it. And I sold it. If, well, not sold it, it's free show. Right. Every day my room was full because it was such a good venue for people just hanging oh, out. Oh, yeah, in train station. Right you just train got station, them yeah. up to your room, no problem. Yeah. Well, that's good going. So that's it. Did you, how did the show go? That show was good. And then the year after, it was absolutely terrible. And I got this two-star review, and it was that two-star review that made me want to move down and do it full time. Because I was like, I'll never cane if I can do comedy unless I actually properly do yeah. comedy. Who gave you the two-star review? Do you remember them? Um, it's all right if you can still hold the No, no, because I, I saw it and I was like, this is fair. But when they told me they'd been in, they came in on one of the days that I hated the most. Right. And I didn't realize you could even talk to reviewers and be like, look, that day was... Can you do that? Well, I think you can. I can think you can say if the day was abysmal, be like, look, that day was actually abysmal. Right. But um, I just, I just, but I actually said thank you because their review is totally fair. Okay, and it wasn't nice. even mean. It was just like... It was like, um, with more work, she could be better. Like, it wasn't like she should quit. It's like, right. she needs to work. Where was that venue? That was Barbados. I think that was the year, because I, I came to see you at French Show before we even knew each other. So, uh, <coughs> I came to see you before we even knew each other. Really? Yeah. That was the show I did about, like, comparing myself to a folktale. You threw a cat across the room. Oh, God. You know, I stopped doing that part way through the run because I got so fed up with that bit. You threw it. I think yeah, you, the cat hit me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was sitting there with my friend. Origin story. I, I, my friend had. Uh, had you been doing BBC social stuff before that? Yeah, because that I used to filmmaking. That's how I sketched if I did. Yeah. yeah. So my friend was like, "Oh, let's go and see her." I was like, "Okay." Oh, cool. Lobbed the cat right at me. Honestly, what did you think of that show? You it was good, it? but you had uh, you. I think we've we've spoke about this already as well. And you were like, "Oh no, I had one bad night." And I think that must have been the night you had the reviewer in. But the night we came, it was brilliant. You were, that, that was the show you hit. I think I take reviews too literally. Well, I would love to do that show again, but write it better. But then I think because in my head, that show was like, if it didn't go good at the start, I had no way to pick it up again. Yeah. So it was either a good night or... Because I remember there's one day that was abysmal, but I finished it in 40 minutes. The reviewers in on a less bad day. But it was just like I had no control. So it would either be good because the audience was great from the top, or if it wasn't good, I had, I didn't have the skills or the... Yeah. And it wasn't enough jokes. It wasn't lots of punchlines. It was just like very... It was a shit venue though, because you could hear two other shows at the same time. And the pipes gurgling. And the pipes. And a year later, those toilet pipes burst apparently mid-fringe. Oof. Like, what, it, during some of the show? I... Yes, let's say that's let's the second Someone got everyone got covered in shit. Yeah. yeah. And the whole the whole floor was wired from one plug. It was, it was rough. It yeah. felt like you were in... Because like, it was just like plywood walls there wasn't anything else the doors were the curtains some doors yeah and i did a storytelling show a floor below in that building and the door was just like broken so when the room was in i'd have to just set the door against and just hope that no one needed to go That's in and out because you have to just like lift and put the just door put the back. door up yeah and every day during my storytelling show at the sad bit Barbados started playing dance music downstairs so it just it, yeah the show. it wasn't it wasn't a great venue and someone that. stole my ipod Jesus Christ, you don't have much luck. I usually do. Yeah. What's the what's the kind of luckiest thing that's ever happened to you, do you think? I won a PlayStation off of Dig It. No way. Yeah. Like, original PlayStation? Yeah. That's pretty good. Yeah. Uh, what did you do? Have to, uh, did you have to enter it? Um, you had to phone and answer a question, and it was an episode <coughs> of Recess I'd already seen, which was, what does TJ swap for a monster card? And I was like, his red cap. So I could phone in immediately and I'd give the question answer for the episode of Bean. And then my brother was like, stop phoning. No shanders ever win this stuff. We live too far away for them to send it to. So oh. on the call, I was like, please let me win. I know I live far away, but oh, my brother says you don't send them to Shetland. That's absolutely <laughs> heartbreaking. Then I won. <laughs> I was, phoned, is, was that like a week Saturday afternoon? It was an Easter holiday special. Um, and uh, <clears throat> they'd normally read the winner's name out, but they said her name's on the screen. And they never tried reading my name They never out. even attempted it? No. That's but I sent shame. them a thank you card to Des and Fern and Jasper the dog. I don't think I saw Dig It. Oh, it was so good. But I remember, I remember, I, I remember it being on. Yeah. But it was more like SMTV Live. Or the later one, you slapped in and missed Dig It. Was it? Was Dig that It was before, and then SMTV Live came on after. Oh my god. Yeah. 
I still, I mean, there's still a, 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 a moment on SMTV Live that I'll still never forget. Like oh, it, can I guess? Go for it. Is it. If it's my favourite moment as well, I will cry of laughter. Go for it. Okay, there's, oh, there's two moments actually I'm thinking of. Was it in a poke battle? It wasn't. Okay, is it the, Brian, it's Brian. No, it wasn't oh. either of them. Was it was, it? it was in, it was on, I, tell you, I won't say that, but, so, the dude, you know how they used to sing like, Mr. Postman. Stop. Yeah. So they used to kind of get up and everyone used to kind of be in a line and they were all just kind of like, stop. And then in the back, Deck was kind of just like, like a little bit like, kind of oh like no. hazy. And then he collapsed. Oh dear. And like they all went, medic, medic, run and get a medic. And the like, people like ran in from the side and it cut to the ad break. And then when I, I was like sitting there like, oh, what the fuck? Oh my God, Deck's dead. Oh my God. I can't believe Deck's going to be dead. And then it came back from the outbreak, went right into Pokemon. So they kept you waiting longer. And then it came back on. And uh, there are just three of them just standing there. And Deck just goes, happy April Fools. <gasps> and I was just like, oh, I feel like such a fucking idiot. I genuinely it was, I'm still like annoyed at myself to this day for falling for that. Because <sighs> uh, I was honestly just like, like, like waking up my family being like, I think Deck's dead. Live and I know, imagine all that scarred burns. Me. Also, like, imagine the mum thought it was real and turned off the tellies before they ever saw he was okay. It was, it was on, I, I still remember exactly, I was sitting on the, literally, you know how people say, like, I was on the edge of my seat. I was on the edge of my Who seat. That's know. such a full on one to do. Yeah, they got me. They got me absolutely in sinker. I would have thought that, like, now, as you're telling me the story, I was like, oh, he had a bad hangover come down from, like, a Coke bridge the night before. And was he in a Coke? I yeah. don't know. I just always Seems think like, like so another rumor, another allegedly rumor that. <laughs> <laughs> I I just think like I I always wonder now as an adult looking back like how many of them were just like, hey kids, you know, yeah. <laughs> oh it's seven a.m. Like how else did they do it? Do you remember Toby Anstis? No. Children's TV presenter, and Ian, do you remember Toby Anstis? He was the kind of guy. He was on like he was in like one of the CBBC like the broom cupboards with like one of the pets. Like, uh, and and in my head, he was. What a, pet did he have? What I can't remember. Puppet, what Toby, I usually remember them by the puppet, not the person. It definitely wasn't Andy Peters. Had, <laughs> Andy Peters had the gopher, didn't he? No, I wish that would have been the dream team because it was going <laughs> the gopher and bloody Philip Schofield. Yeah, yeah. Andy Peters had that like annoying green duck, wasn't it? Oh, Ed the and, duck. Yeah, and it, I wish because Andy Peters my favorite. Going gopher is my favorite. They would have been like, yeah, the that best. Been good. So Toby Ansis was like kind of like I just thought he was just kind of like holier than thou. Wait a minute, he was quite handsome, brown hair. Yeah, I imagine tall. Yeah, so he was on that, and then I used to like on like a Friday night, I used to stay up late and watch the show called Ibiza Uncovered, and it was all these. I was genuinely thought I was mental because I was just like I'm going to stay up till half eleven and watch the show, Sleepy. and it was all these like you know just like mad like nightclub stories from Ibiza, and then one of them it just kind of cut to Toby Anstis with his top off, like sweating, like a girl grinding on him, and he just had the big cigar, and he just like, Whoa. and I remember just like my childhood ended that second, I was like, oh my God, Toby Anstis is an absolute animal. Oh my gosh. I wish I could tell him that. You never imagine. Yeah, so that's it, that was my childhood over, Toby Anstis, done. I feel sorry, because I meant, can you remember when John and, and who was it, was it John and Bradley? From S Club 7 got caught walking down the street with a joint. Did they? And it was like, that oh my gosh, that. like bad, bad, bad. And now when you're like this age, you're like, yeah. wow, that's yeah, you feel like all good the, folk I in trouble for that. You feel like all the kind of journalists reporting on it are probably absolutely like high on coke as well. Probably yeah. couldn't pass a drug test if they tried. Like when Kate Moss got trouble for taking coke out of patterns, like how do they think models have energy? Yeah, yeah, that's wild. Um, how did we even get on to that? Uh, Scottish... Language awards. <laughs> <laughs> we went from there to Toby Anstis and Ibiza just off his tits. Drugs are great. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, what happened? So, yeah, so you, you didn't put, even put yourself forward for that? No. You just got nominated. I, yeah, oh, sorry. So, <laughs> oh my God. So, uh, I could do it so that Ian could cut back in if he doesn't like any of that chat. So, during the fringe, <laughs> I got nominated. <laughs> this is going to be a 10 minute podcast. Um, yeah, and um, they just, they just, um, I don't know how they pick who they pick, but the language centre just picks Fox to nominate. 
and then they do an online vote for who they want to win so anyone can vote and you got the big prize because it was like social media star teacher of the year you got the big one aren't teachers the most important members all right you got to say that i'm gonna cut that about i'm doing the edit that's it (laughs) Ralph is an idiot. <laughs> I'm going to say that so many times. Yeah, <laughs> that, if you can cut it out. I'm going to keep it. I'm Silly keep boob it. Ralph. Stupid Ralph. He's a big old boob. He's a boob bitch. <laughs> so you got the big prize. You got the main one. Um, I don't know if it's the main one. Scott Speaker of the Year feels like it's the main one. Okay. That's you know, cool. Was it not on the night? Were well, you there at the awards? Y- well, yeah, but I was lucky to be there on time. Because me and my cousin went and we're both the worst people that keep in time. And it was mm-hmm. like, drinks reception and awards. So I was like, oh, drinks at seven, awards at eight. So like, let's go for about half seven. We'll aim quarter past. Right. And then I was like, oh. And I was uh, going to go to my cousin's to get ready. And then I realized it was drinks at six, awards at seven. Oh, my God. So I had to get changed. That is so you, by the way. That is absolutely you to a T. And my cousin. So I had to phone my cousin. And I was like, I'm in the car. I was like, um, because I just, when I realized that, I was about to leave the flat of my dress. I just had to put the dress on, get in the car, and mess with my cousin, like, meet you at the awards. So w- lucky we wanted to have drinks. Otherwise, we'd never made it. So I just made it to the awards on time. And it was one of the first awards. And I did, I did give out the first award. And then, we, then that category was, like, next. That's brilliant. Yeah. That's... Thank God we wanted a drink. Yeah. Imagine if you'd missed. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine if you just hadn't turned up. Oh. Like, how much of a... She's just not. She's going to dial in live via satellite from Shetland. Like, here's Mary Lane. <laughs> so you go up, you get the award. Because I, I looked into previous award winners of that. Did you know who else won that? No. Janie Godley won that. No way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. think it's maybe like three... Yeah, I do a lot of research, by the way. I've done a lot of research on... I guess. I've not researched anything about I mean, you. I didn't really, I didn't research Gareth much, but fuck him, he's not going to listen to this. You didn't so research Gareth all much? No, didn't research Gareth much at all. I made a joke, but you can... I got it. Oh. I don't think anyone else will go to <laughs> Yeah, no, there's not a lot, it's not been going a few years, and Janie Godley won it. So, say, kind of big in the comedians. Yeah, because I was worried that I was a fraud because I was when I found out it's nominated it was during the fringe and that's when I can act the most. Like when I'm down here, I hardly speak Shetland because you don't want to lose anyone on a joke. Yeah. If I speak too broad, I'll miss I'll lose them on the setup and then I've lost them for the punchline. Yeah. So I was like, they're like, You've been nominated for Scott Speaker and I was like, I'm hardly speaking Shetland right now, but thank you. But it's still Scots though. Yeah. You still can you, you still kinda like even when you kinda like talking, you even in your set, you still kinda like drop in like I, bits. Yeah. I always, yeah. But no, I was happy to be nominated and I was pleased to win. Nice. Yeah. yeah. And uh, there's also, I don't know, I don't know if we'll be able to keep this in because I don't know the BBC New Comedy. When is this getting uh, so off, this, off I've, topic? I've, I've, I've looked into this. Wait. I've looked into this. So when this goes it? out, this goes out on the Thursday and that goes out on the Wednesday. No, it's on the Tuesday night, is it? Or is it Wednesday night? I think it goes out on the Wednesday night. So this will be coming out after this. So we'll know the results. Oh, I, so we can talk, can we talk about it? We can talk about it, because it's okay. not going to come out until after it's been on TV. Okay. I won. No fucking... No, I didn't. I, <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to tell someone I won. I genuinely, you looked so excited to tell me that there. You looked like you were just like, can we talk about it? I, no, I didn't win. <sighs> but I mean... Oh, can we, so we can actually talk about it? Oh yeah, this, we can talk okay. about it as much as you want. Yeah. So you got to BBC New Comedy Final. Did loads of heats. The semi-final, Kamarnock. Where was the final? In St David's Hall in Cardiff. Nice. It's my first time in Cymraeg, Wales. Hello, hello to Wales. And I then forgot how to say hi in Welsh. <coughs> Is it in Cymru? I'm scared I'm going to say everything wrong. Don't worry, we'll cut this bit out. Okay. We'll cut this bit out. So you had the final. How was, it, how was the kind of process going through from start to finish for that? For the whole comedy awards? For the whole comedy awards. Um. Well... I think I was lucky to be in it because I think I only put my entry in at like one minute to midnight on deadline day. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that was lucky that I got, even got in. And then I never thought anything more of it because I thought like the five minute video I put in wasn't that great. And then got invited to do the heat during the fringe. Yep. So I was just going to do my normal five. But then I hadn't really read the email. But the email was like, you cannot do anything that's been on telly or the internet before. You've done quite a lot of stuff on the internet, haven't you? Yeah. And I was like, I've splurged it all on that Edinburgh Uncovered show before the Fringe. I was like, that's Shit. my five. Yeah. So me and uh, Mason Stade, who's tacking for me in the Fringe, sat doing with my show. And Michael Welsh too. We all sat doing with my show. 
and um, just pieced a new five the day before the competition due to the show. And then I did that at the heat. At the heat. Yeah. So right. it wasn't new material. It was just like trying to get it into yeah, your head Yeah, you just kind of cut and cut and cut and cut. Yeah. So then get through the heat, casually through the heat. Yeah, and then they're saying you have to do the same bit again at the semi-final. Okay. And then they asked for a transcript. So I had to say, can you please send me a clip of what I did the heat? Because you couldn't So remember. I know what I said. <laughs> <laughs> so you essentially got them to do the transcript for you. Well, yeah, and then I wrote the transcript. And I was like, That's, that'll be my new five. I quite like that. And then did it at Kilmarnock. That's pretty good going. Yeah. And then you got to the final. Because I remember you were, I think... Well, we, we were meant to gig together on the night of that, and you were like, I'm going to stay at home, because you obviously knew that you'd got through, and you couldn't tell people. Oh, yeah, because on the semi-final night, I was doing your gig, yeah, and I yeah, ran yeah. away to go watch it. Yeah, and you no. were like, no, 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 I think I was I it. didn't watch it at all. I didn't do your gig at all. No, 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 no I know, because you were like, oh, I want, to just, I want to stay home and watch it, but you didn't tell me. You were just like, oh, I'm just going to stay in and watch the semi-final, and I was like, I should have seen the, the signs I there. I wish I did your gig, because I still reckon I could have got home and watched it, plus... Okay. I didn't even watch it at the right time because we don't have a telly. <laughs> so I could have just come to <laughs> your gig anyway. I'm sorry, I pulled out. <laughs> you could have watched, watched it on demand. I yeah. could have been on stage and be like, I won. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so you get through the semis and then you go down to Cardiff. Did you have to do a 10 or a 5 in Cardiff? Just the same 5. The same 5 again. Which I kind of wish I could have done something different by this point. That feels mental to have to win a competition based on a 5. Yeah, and uh, well, a lot of other folk did a pretty bit longer, and I was like, oh, I wish I could have slipped in some other jokes. Yeah. Also, it was kind of annoying, because when I said I'm from Shetland, some people in the audience were like, wow, at the very that beginning. Eat into your five. And I was just like, oh, no, because my response when anyone ever goes wild in the audience is to make a joke about, like, oh, mom's in, which I automatically said. Then I was like, damn it, my next joke is about my mom and her not being there. But I was like, oh, well. Oh, here we go. <laughs> 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 yeah, don't, don't shout things at competitions Christ or no. ever no. That's the same. that happened at Funny Woman final as well someone shouted out during my five and I was like oh. yeah, it feels like something in the audience should just be like just shut up yeah don't yeah, yeah. but no it was, the final was really fun but I was on after Dan Dan Tiernan who won I was gonna say uh, who won oh, oh yeah so Dan I, I feel like won. I'm doing something illegal because I'm telling you before this is no, no, this honestly, this isn't this isn't, this isn't going to go anywhere. Uh, this will okay. be this will be sitting with me Ooh. until Thursday. Secrets, secrets in your So Dan Tiernan won. Yeah, and he was like, all the finalists were incredible, but like I was on after Dan, so I was watching his set before I went on. Wow, I think I'm a lucky charm for other people. How? Because I was on after the winner at Funny Woman too. I must just come in you must go <laughs> and just not be that funny. And they're like, the person before. Yeah, not, not her. Anyone but her, the person before. <laughs> I'm glad you've had a real-time realisation on this. At least I came... Okay, yeah, so Dan Dan was um, on, and when I was watching his set, there's especially one joke he did when I was like, and you have to watch his set to see it, but he's talking about a dance trip he used to be in. And when he's doing that joke... The judges broke. Yeah. Like it just broke with laughter. And I watched it and I thought he's got it in the bag. Yeah. He's won. But on the, funny guy. on the train to the way to Wales, I was reading everyone's bios and they're all like, So you think you're funny winners and short award winners? Yeah. And you come in and I was like, I'm I'm not winning. Because at first I read that and I got really, really nervous on the train. Then I got so nervous I went beyond nervous when I was like, I'm not gonna win, so I'll just go down and do my best. I don't know. You could have easily that because I saw everyone that was in the final. You're as good, if not so better. So I fucked it. You did. You, you absolutely <laughs> fucked it. You had your chance. But not to be fair, that's pretty good going to get there. You know, I was so chuffed. And I also thought when they were about to announce a winner, because they've got a camera on your face. Oh, like, you're all sitting no. there together backstage. And I was thinking, because I was thinking, actually, I don't know how I've done. And it would be nice to win. I like to win, obviously. Yeah. And I advise, like, there's a camera on my face. And if I don't win, like you've got to did you practice your well no oh, because, I but i also said before i was like because dan was dan and i have known each other for years yeah and i was, I was like oh we're in the competition like i'll be so happy if one of us wins kind of thing so when they said his name i genuinely was happy well, that's good that's lucky and afterwards i was like i'm such a great person <laughs> so <laughs> happy for my friend so humble well done <laughs> yeah but no he definitely deserved to win because he just blew out the park yes yeah, yes yeah, very funny yeah um, yeah, because the lineup, strong, strong lineup for a final. Yeah. Oh my gosh, yeah. Um, I'd gigged with the guy Joshua. Yeah. Very funny guy. 
he was we did the frog bucket his last week. His on stage mannerisms is so funny. The way he holds himself on stage, yeah, and delivers it's his just jokes. the most driest. Yeah, he's so funny. Was there is it a first, second, and third, or they just just a winner? Clean a winner. Yeah, because I told my mom that Dan won it, and I was like, "But I'm happy for him." And she's like, "Why are you happy that you didn't win?" And I was like. <laughs> I didn't find it. like, yeah, it is it? No, you're so really good you got to the final. Did you at least get second? <laughs> that's that's what I was It's think. like mams. mams. Yeah, <laughs> they just want you to win. Yeah. That's, that's why I think comedy competitions are so awkward because it's just like, you cannot, you want to win. And then, so when you see someone else doing well, part of you is like, again, it could be a friend and you're kind of like, oh, I'm really happy they're doing well. But at the same time, you're like, I'm in this for a reason yeah. and that you want to win. I find them very uncomfortable. Whereas at gigs, you just want everyone to smash yeah, it you all just, the time. Yeah, you want everything. If someone has a bad set, you go, fuck, that's going to make everything harder. God damn it. Yeah, but yeah, comedy <laughs> competitions are so, so uncomfortable. Un and unnatural in the comedy world. But I have to say, the two competitions have been in this year, both finals have been genuinely lovely. And yeah. I've genuinely been thinking, oh, anyone wins this, I'm happy for them. Yeah. Like... They'd be nice, I think. And it was just such a lovely bunch of folk to hang out with for the day. So it's yeah, because nice. there, there was Robbie McShane as well. He, yeah, which he, I didn't realise because I came him. Yeah, and yeah I he, didn't lives, realize, he lives up here. Because he I got too scared to watch the rest of the semi-finals. After seeing Dee in the first semi-final and how funny she is, yeah. Jan was like, she was so funny. And then I got too scared to watch any more semi-finals to see who else was in it. Yeah. Yeah. So I who else was... Yeah. Robbie McShane was in it. Omar, but he won... He, he won... Um, so you think you're funny last year? Oh, yeah, 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 so long, yeah. Yeah, and he was, he was incredible. He was another person I was watching where I was like, I thought he had it in the bag as well. But I thought the same about everyone, actually. But it was definitely when um, Dan was on stage, it was just like another level where you're like, he's got it. And when he actually went on to win the award, everyone in the background was like, yeah, he deserved to win. What he was the what was the setup like, like for when they're announcing the winner? Are you all out on stage or what's happening? No, we're in the little off the side of the stage, just kind of just sitting huddled up together. But it was nice because that's where the monitor was, so we spent all the time there watching each other. Right, okay. Apart from when I would go out the back and be like, <gasps> I never burped so much when I went on stage. I thought I might spew, but I didn't spew. But I just couldn't stop burping like this long continuous burp. But I think I made everyone feel uncomfortable. Yeah, like is she going <laughs> to spew here? Oh my! If you'd spewed before you went on stage, or on stage. Imagine you have to cut that out. Anna, who won the year before, spewed before she went on. No way. She was telling me afterwards. Yeah. That's that's rough. Yeah, but it was it was it was really fun. I'm just so pleased to make the final. I, I, it's funny. I always think as well, being from Shetland, then I used to do comedy all the way like back to front. Yeah. So you. I wish I was for fives, and I was like, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just here because I'm like the token Shetlander kind of thing. So it's nice to like. So you went all the way up to. I was shows and then you just pull the back, scale it back, doing fives and competitions and everything like that. Yeah, to learn how to do a five. <laughs> it's harder doing a fives in an hour. I can't, like, honestly, if someone says do a five, it's just like, what? But it can, it can be done, but you've got to be, it's got to be punchy as hell. Yeah, which is what I didn't do, because doing hour shows for years, and I was like, that's why um, I only think I really started doing comedy properly when I moved in 2019. Right. And then you just start gigging down here loads. Also, I was technically a newcomer for BBC because the way it was, you just had to not have been paid by the professional circuit before a certain date. And because I've been doing hour shows for like free fringe for years, right, so I was okay. like, oh, perfect. That doesn't count. I'm yeah. technically, I still am a newcomer, just in case anyone thinks I'm a liar. No, 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 okay. anyone's gonna, no one's going to look into this. Don't worry, I think you're going to be okay. <laughs> Imagine that, you just get scrapped from the final. <laughs> but I mean, good going getting it to the final. Thank you. It's very impressive. Um... Do you, are you going to go any more competitions you want to uh, try and win? No, I don't know if I want to do any anymore because there's a funny woman as well. Yeah, can you enter that again? No, I got second place. Yeah, no, no, be, could you enter that again to try and win it? I think once you're in the final, you can't enter it again. So I think BBC, once you've been in the semi-final, you can't enter it again. Okay. And the funny woman, once you've been in the final, you can't enter it again. That's fair. Which is fine because I'm just like, that's cool. I might enter like the content categories or like the sketch yeah. categories in future. But I am... Um, I also feel like if I'd never had to do a comedy competition again, that might be quite nice. Yeah. But I, I also think it's too late for me to do So You Think You're Funny or The Short or Newcomer. I didn't know about these competitions. This is another thing I just didn't know existed. No one tells you. Someone just give you a heads up when you start and just be like, hey, look, do this after yeah. maybe three years. And then, then you'll be able to do that. Do this after that. And then, yeah. But there no should be you. like a guide. Like there's a comedy forum that 
tell us when gigs are and you just have like a guide for all the open spots to contact when you're starting yeah and it should be like after two or three years now contact these competitions yeah but like literally that forum is the least helpful thing on earth <laughs> that is just the most toxic place and a lot of fucking competitions even newcomers have agents who are helping them in and i'm yeah. just like i didn't even realize you could have an agent i did that leicester square one last year leicester oh, square i didn't one. know about that one either i think you i could, missed my could, chance no no you could still do that one you really? could still do that one um, I went there and the person that won that <laughs> I'm never doing a competition again <laughs> <laughs> what's the details who books that that's a really cool one though okay um, but I did that and the, the people that were in the final all had like agents and I'd done full runs at like the Soho Theatre and I was like this doesn't feel like a new com- like comedian competition but I mean it's it is really good and it's a very cool venue and then you obviously get to do the Soho Theatre at the end you don't do that in the heats in the heats you do like the Museum of Comedy have you heard of that no it's this really weird room maybe like a 40 seater it's literally in a museum it's got like a bar and then like a little room off the side and that's that's it wow so you could do that one okay um i think it's literally just finished in like the last few months yeah so there we go okay but you I'm just you just kind of just went from never doing them again leicester not leicester Leicester. Less Leicester. leicester square new leicester. comedian of the year okay yeah i got papped out at the second heat Oh, sorry. After just, oh, can you? Go, are you gonna go again? No, I think I. I kind of after that one, I was like, I'm probably not gonna travel for any kind of competitions anymore. I'll happily do like Manchester, Liverpool, things like that, but never really been that keen to kind of travel down to London for them. I also don't understand why more ones don't happen during the fringe when all yeah. of industry is in the same location. Yeah, it feels it feels bizarre to just have that, but I mean, some do, but not enough. Yeah, but then again, I think a lot of people don't want to be like. We're we're different from the fringe. We're we're kind of yeah. We do we don't want to associate with that. Yeah, and I think so. You think your funny's probably got the newcomer thing down. Yeah, I think that's probably the one that kind of kind of just kind of coasts through and gets it done. Yeah. So you you kind of talked about there about how you you do a lot of online content as well. Yeah. What's your uh, favorite thing to do online? Because you've done, you do play twi- neopets. What was that? Play neopets. Okay. <laughs> What's your favorite thing you can Although do? Although I've got myself locked out my account. What is Neopets? So they're hungry. Oh, is this like a tam- an online Tamagotchi? Kinda, yeah. Do you play that on Twitch? No, like this it's, is just it's something I was really time. addicted to for years. It's, yeah, oh sorry, I was just making a joke. All right. <laughs> I thought you were saying this is what you did on Twitch. <laughs> oh no, no, no. And um, right now, what you want is my favorite thing to do online is um <laughs> I don't know if this is too niche. But um I like so I stream on Twitch and I do storytelling and I was telling a story at night for lockdown which was a good thing to keep me going locked in because there's a thing in stand-up called Dr. Showbiz. You know Dr. Showbiz? No, what's that? It's when you're feeling poorly or upset about something, but then when you walk onto stage, all those troubles just fade away. Did you talk about that on the Material Girl podcast? I listened to that like literally oh, last oops, night. Oh, then I will stop talking about no, it. No, 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 I'm saying I literally heard that and I was like, I've never heard of that. And then as soon as you start telling me more of it, I think, that, no, no, I have heard of that. You uh. told me that last night on another podcast. I told you that. Yeah. <laughs> Are you one of those people that listen to podcasts like she's talking to me? Yeah, she's, I'm going to get to talk to her tomorrow in person. I can't wait. Doctor, so you do Doctor Showbiz and that makes you feel better. Yeah, so in lockdown, I couldn't sleep or read or even watch films at the start because I was so anxious that the world was going to end. I remember that. Because at the start of, I remember this, because we did... I saw it coming. <laughs> we, at the start, I, it was, we did Monkey Barrel comedy, shout out Monkey Barrel comedy. We did the free-for-all, the last... It wasn't the free-for-all, we were doing the the team thing, the comedy showdown. Yes, we it's did Gus and I versus you and Joe. Yeah. And, and then, then Gus and I went out, so why didn't you and Joe start going out? Uh, he, he was, was, that he was in the contract, right? I, I, That's I tried why to we hit, did that. I tried to hit on Joe McTurn and he'd knock me back. But yeah, we tr- that night, and I remember. I don't I, believe this. I mocked you because you were like, "Ralph, this is serious. This is," and I was like, "Covid. Lane. We're talking about Covid. Yeah, we're talking about Covid. <laughs> just before Covid, and you were like, "No, no, no. I'm going up to Shetland. I'm going to escape this." And I was like, "This was like maybe about ten days before the proper like lockdown all kicked in, and I was still just like." This is all going to blow over in a few days. It's just the media blowed it out of proportion. And you went, no, Rob, this is going to be serious. And I remember being like, this, is, this isn't this is serious at all. And you won that. You won that debate. <laughs> Why am I? Might... <laughs> yeah, because I was freaking out. Like, I am um, also, I suppose my relationship I was in at the time ended and I was staying in my friend's flat and hadn't brushed my hair for like seven days. But I remember, um, 
yeah, just I couldn't sleep. I felt like I was on I felt like I was on a roller coaster all the time and I couldn't breathe. And I and I learned that I think that's anxiety. That is that sounds a lot like anxiety. Like, yeah. yeah. So then that's why in lockdown I told stories every night on Twitch because it gave me something that hour I was telling stories for took me out of that feeling. Yeah. It's a pretty good feeling. And then during the day I just like plant as many vegetables as I could. So it's like, gotta feed myself through the winter. <laughs> I I, gen- I dug my tatties and I've forgotten to deal with them. That's I've just, all my tatties are sitting in the shed and they're going to get sun damage. Can no one else help that? I'm going to have to message as soon as this podcast finished for my family to go around my shed and get the tatties and... You can, I mean, we can put that out if you okay. want to put that on the podcast. You know, that's probably the best. This will be faster than me remembering to phone my family. <laughs> <laughs> just say that directly into the camera. So you many tatties. How many tatties are you well, losing? Well, they're purple tatties. They might... Mm, I don't know if that's better This is much. such a Marilyn conversation, honest <laughs> to God. No one else on a podcast has gone, fuck, my tatties... I fucked my tatties. <laughs> <laughs> this is brilliant. Oh, what were you talking Very about? unique conversations you have We were talking about here. what I like to do on the internet. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so I like to play this game called Grand Theft Auto 5. And have you played it? I love it. But I don't like the game as such. I like the online version. Basically... You just play the multiplayer. In, in, in lockdown, a lot. I met a lot of other streamers on the internet. Yeah. And they range from like um, folk I never met for, like like Limmy's on it, and yeah, you, and then Roscoe and because um, I see you, Limmy and Roscoe just kind of like chatting each other on Twitter. I'm like, how the hell did this? How did the hell does this happen? Just all through Twitch. Oh, to yeah, how does one talk to Roscoe? Yeah, you think you summon him? <laughs> I don't know how you do that. <laughs> so you block your pipes up in your bath. <laughs> Someone like crawls out from the yeah. sink. Um. Yeah, and then um, but there's all these like online multiplayer games like Build Your Own World, like Rust, where you like just run around building stuff, and now GTA. Yeah. And on that, I bumped into this guy who always killed me with a chainsaw called Bammer, and through that we become very good friends. So my favorite thing is we go on this like um, when we're streaming, we just make mad characters and go on a journey. So recently he was a devil, and I was he was a demon, and I was a vampire, and we we're gonna go hunt other vampires, but we pretended that we were doctors and we're normal humans. And I realized that this does not translate well to this podcast. So I'm going to stop explaining it. Niche. Very niche. Yeah. <laughs> it's just make-believe. But is this, is this what you do on Twitch? Yeah. Right. I, I do less stories. And I know there's a lot of people who want me to tell more stories again. So I will. I just... Yeah. It's it's easy when I've come home from a gig to log on and just like role play fun games and yeah. come back and be like... And then tell a story. Yeah, yeah. Because, I mean, there must be a lot of pressure. It'd be like, right, and you've got a good story lined up here. Yeah, and find one and what? tell it. Find a story and tell it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, that's, good. that's a lot of pressure. I've watched a few of them. They're really good. I didn't watch them during lockdown. I watched them afterwards because oh, I was just like, okay. I, yeah, I don't know what I was doing during lockdown, but it wasn't that. I never really got into Twitch. It was only after the lockdown I got into Twitch. Why, that's the opposite to yeah, everybody. That, yeah, I know. Cause, Absolute idiot. Yeah, because I used to, there's a period of time when all the comedians had like nicely scheduled their days where I think the first comedian on would be like Liam Withnail. Yeah. And then you could from him until like until one in the morning check in of all the comedians you knew because everyone streamed at a different time. We all yeah. kind of like slotted in together, which was quite nice. So you could just like follow through all the comedians. And then you all just do like raids on each other's thing. Just yeah. Go, Pass, here's my viewers. Here's my viewers. Yeah. There you go. So it's sort of like crosswords with Liam and then I can't remember everything. Like Gareth would be telling Gareth, spooky Gareth games. Water. Yeah, he would be playing spooky games. Who yeah. else was on there? Um, Ashley, what did Ashley do at the very beginning? I can't remember. She was just gaming at the very beginning. Ashley Manning. And Ashley's story as well would stream, but she would be later on. I can't remember. I used to remember the actual schedule of who was yeah. on after who. And then um, I think I would, I after me would be either Gareth or CMB. And then after them would be Roscoe. Yeah. It's a good wee lineup. It was really nice. If that was on a comedy lineup, you'd be like, fucking hell, that's a strong lineup. <laughs> Thing. Actually, I watched all your YouTube videos and I found your best washing machine ever. Um, oh my God, we should talk about that. Okay, um, so question Did wise, you ever see, right. Question wise, oh, well, I can answer that one really quickly. What? You would witness protection yeah. identity. What would that be? Mary Lane Robertson. That's not good. I'll be honest. <laughs> <laughs> I do not know. It needs to be something different from you. Next question. Next question. <laughs> um, you you posted a wash best washing machine ever video online about twelve years ago. I did a deep dive on your YouTube channel. Tell me about. <laughs> did you see the comment that was written underneath that? There's a few comments. There's a comment. So you put you posted a very harmless video of just beeping and booping so on the washing machine. I think what happened was our washing machine sounded like Super Mario. Yeah. It sounded like when he's getting coins like. Doo-doo-doo. 
And I was like, this is amazing. So I just filmed myself using it. And while I, st- I just filmed myself using it, like from like my perspective, I got a nosebleed. So I started bleeding everywhere yeah, yeah, in the video, and which is in, the in terms of service. Yeah. Um, but basically I was just making that video to show to my brother how cool the machine was, but because it was like back in like 2010, I thought the easiest way to send a video to Shetland was for me to upload it to YouTube. So I called it the best washing machine ever. And now I know that there is a very strict code to using those. It's like saying, it's like doing a stand-up show and calling yourself the best comedian in the UK because there's a lot of people who go to YouTube to compare washing machines who are very angry at me that when they try and find the best washing machine model, they get my video. I know that because one of the comments, and this is genuine, I copied and pasted that under your video of best washing machine ever, someone just wrote, disgusting. Why post a video that gives no information to help anyone else and is or should be embarrassing for you? And they just then just wrote disgusting again. <laughs> disgusting. <laughs> Someone was on the hunt for the best washing machine ever, and you fucked them off. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody also wrote, "Imagine what our periods are like," and I'm like, "They sent me to hospital, so you're not wrong." Yeah, there was a lot of people asking that in all your in all your comments. Is that something you spoke about on Twitch? Because that feels like if, there was too many comments. There were that. old comments though. Like before, I think I've spoken about my periods. I was going to do a stand up show about my periods, and um, I now don't know if that's something I shouldn't do because like just another woman talking about her periods. Why not? Just go for it. Okay, I'll go for it. But maybe in two years' time. That was what the bloody poster was about that I never did in 2020. Yeah. It's like lockdown stopped me from doing that show. Bring it back. Yeah. Bring that back. I'm fine. I'm pleased you find that video. Did you see the other videos on my channel? Uh, there, was a, there was a video, I'm not joking, that looked like it had been recorded on electric toothbrush. <laughs> it was the lowest resolution I have ever seen. Was it Neil the Neep King? It was Neil the Neep King. <laughs> and it was just... It was so bad. It was like not even like... I don't even know what kind of quality this is. It was not, if there's, if there's 4K, this is like 0.001K. This was fucking embarrassing how <laughs> poor the resolution was, but it was like 12 years ago. Yeah, it's like, when I, well, those were actually when I was like 17 and my brother got Nokia where you could pause and start and pause and start when you recorded. Yeah. And every night after tea, I'd go to do homework and every night he'd get the Nokia and we'd just make stupid videos instead. And I wish you could like make them higher resolution because we find them all and they're so weird. And I'm like that, I just want to put those online. They were, there's two of them. There was two, there was Neil the Neep King and there was another one. Oh, what was it? I can't, but there was two of them and uh, you can't even make it. Was the gun video still on there? No. The, I like guns and I have a collection. That that definitely was not on there. I definitely would have watched that. Oh my God. I was bogged down within. I removed that because I accidentally doxed myself in it and I was going to (coughs) re-edit it and put it up again. But it's about uh, my brother's gun collection, which is an air gun and a staple gun. (laughs) (laughs) And you doxed yourself in the video. I managed to dox myself in that video. How did you do that? Because I don't want to say it too much because I'll probably just dox myself now. Do not dox yourself again. (laughs) Right, I tell you what, well, let's do one question and then we'll call it quits, right? Okay. Um, right. If you had to be haunted by a ghost for the rest of your life, you choose the you choose the person that haunts you, who's it gonna be? Are they gonna watch me sleeping and showering? They're gonna do watch you absolutely everything. They're gonna haunt you, they're gonna be taunting you, they're gonna be just taking over you. Like, who are you gonna pick? Oh, that poor person. Like you'd almost want to pick someone you hate because that's going to be hellish for anyone. I like that instantly with the petty stuff. But then they're going to be, well, yeah, but then, because if you pick someone you like and they're like, why have you done this to me, Mary Lane? <laughs> do B, do B, just pick B Babylons. No, I'll pick, um, if I had to pick a ghost, um, I would pick like, do you ever have those friends that you forget exist? You know, like you're in the car, you're driving home and you're like, oh, we forgot to take home Tom. And then Tom's actually in the car already and you just, he's so quiet. <laughs> I would pick someone like I'd pick my friend Roseanne, who we nicknamed Rose Bland, because you oh just God, forget she's there, so you wouldn't be bothered by her. <laughs> also, she's actually a very good poet and storyteller, so we'd also have interesting conversations when I remember she's there. But otherwise, does she, she know s- she's called Rose Bland? Yeah, she actually oh, used to be her Twitter handle, and now she's like more of like an actual like she's got like published poetry books and everything. She's changed her handles so it's more professional <laughs> but she used to call herself rose Blind. did you come up with that that's absolutely brutal um, did they leave her once behind i can't remember but the number of times we've just accidentally just forgotten she's in the room or we've forgotten to invite her to the room oh christ well but she's happy she's doing good she doesn't you know? give a fuck about being invited so i think i'd have her as a ghost because should i pick someone we know in comedy and said the same thing about them yeah do it okay who do you know in comedy that you just forgets in the room I mean, that's a tough one. 
Everyone's an annoying bastard, aren't they? Everyone's just really in your face. I don't know why I'd pick Ryan Cullen, but probably Ryan Cullen. Do Ryan Cullen. Okay, in the same way. Do it. Is that really mean? But I mean, it doesn't matter. He doesn't have a choice. <laughs> God, am I going to make an enemy? I think you already have. Um, so I'd pick Ryan Cullen because, wait, I would pick someone that you forget is there sometimes. Why, why is that your angle on that? Why wouldn't you want to just be like, just chuck someone under the bus? Because because if they're watching you and they're with you all the time, and I really like my alone time, I really value being completely <laughs> on my own. So I would pick someone like Ryan, like in the fringe, we shared the same venue, and he'd just come into the room and like just like lie down quietly on the ground, and you just trip over him, you'd forget he was there. So I'd pick Ryan Cullen as this like little ghost. Strong choice. I mean, there's a good chance he's already like dead, you know. As in, like he's got this like way where he's like. His humour's so dark. Oh, it's very dark. He's been places, probably hell and back, so he's maybe already a ghost. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's I mean, a good he could be right the corner right now, we wouldn't know. I think that's quietly. a good answer. I think that's a good answer. Yeah. Uh, any of the other ones you want to do? Um, quickly, if you uh, if you could swap body with someone 24 hours, who would you be? A man. Yeah? With a penis. Okay, why? What would you do? I always wonder how sex feels differently between men and women. That's a fear. Because, like, I think it's very different. <clears throat> and I don't know if this is too much of an uh, emotional, intimate question. But, like, I always find it interesting after you have sex with someone to be like, and why Why does that feel good? Like, how, how would you describe that moment? Yeah. That would be your one. You would just want to do that 24 hours. I just think it's a very different thing. Where I don't know if it's <coughs> going to get too central a, a question. But like, as a woman, when you have sex, it's like, or like, well, I shouldn't say that, but like, if you have a vagina, that's one, and you're having the old classic penis into vagina sex, you know, <laughs> that one. This is, this is too... Very, this is, then it's very like, PC. It's about like, uh, I don't know how to describe it without talking to it. You know, I'm not going to answer this because if, <laughs> people are watching, if you've been watching this course since, then I'm just like actually digging myself a hole where I'm just like putting myself in more danger. How about you just do a celebrity? Oh, so, okay. I would swap bodies with... Oh, if only there's a person who could fly so I could fly around. Does that have to be a human? No, you can do whatever you want. You make I, the rules on this one. I, I, oh, You're frozen. This is too difficult for is me. It? Uh, but it does, I would, I, uh, w personally, I would like to try having a penis for a bit. Right, see okay. what that's like. Go. And then, but then if you swap bodies with somebody to have, and then you're having sex with somebody, then like, who do you have sex with? Because you'd have to be like, by the way, this is Maddie Lane inside of Robert Pattinson's body. And they'd be like, who? And you'd be like, that's, I love that that's the one you went to, the guy from Twilight. You yeah. would be that guy for a day. Just to be inside of him. <laughs> what a lovely way to end the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Who would you swap bodies with? Um, fucking good question. I haven't, that's the thing, I prepped all these questions. I'd also be worried because like, I'd like to swap bodies with like, maybe like an Inuit and travel on the snow and do all this stuff, but I'm like, I don't know how to do that. So would I swap bodies with someone and just crash their sledge and then come back into their body and they'd be like, what's happened? Yeah, I think I would probably do someone. I just, again, it was so boring. I'd just do someone in another country that I would probably wouldn't ever visit. All would happen is you'd walk into tables all day because you wouldn't be used to controlling someone else's body. You know what I mean? Yeah. Do you not know fuck it? Scrap that question. It was absolute shit. <laughs> <laughs> Never asking that question again. Uh, anything else you want to say before the podcast goes? Anything you want to sign off with? Uh, not really. Cool. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I should like promote stuff, shouldn't I? Go for it. What are you doing? What are you doing this week? What week is this? What week is this? Next week. This is yeah. This is next week. Um, I. You're going to be on the. You'll have just been on the BBC New I Comedy Final BBC last New year. Yeah. Last year. Anything else? Um, I'm doing. I'm doing a charity gig. Um, along with Jay Lafferty, she's organising it in the stand on Tuesday. Oh, I've already been. Oh, um. What are you doing for Christmas? Uh, oh, I hope I get to open presents. I hope someone's giving me some presents to open. Oh, I feel like there's definitely things... I feel like there's something I'm meant to be telling people to get tickets to, but it probably has already been. Yeah. Please, please follow me. Oh, I know. Please follow me on Instagram and TikTok because I think Twitter is a dying medium and that's where all my followers are. Like it's I, about to die I've big time. I've spent so many years building my Twitter following and I even ha used to have a big Instagram and I deleted it. Yeah, you did, didn't you? And now I'm, 
Yeah, please find me on Instagram and TikTok. I'll put all the links in the episode yeah, description. And you can find me on Twitter too, but... Don't, it's going to be dead within a week. Elon Musk is like that sheriff. It's like he's watched Robin Hood with the fox and thought the sheriff was the protagonist. Yeah, he's a fucking idiot. Thank you for having me on. Pleasure. This has been Absolute fun. pleasure. Uh, you've got uh, your, your headline in spandex at the end of the month. Promote that. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Am I? No, I am. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Classic you. I have to remind you about the gig here. I've been working on a new bit for it, actually. Lovely. I can't yeah. wait to hear it. Anyway, that's us. That's us done. Bye. I'm waving if you're just listening to this. Can you listen or watch? You can listen or watch. So I'm waving. Bye, everyone.